Hello, and welcome to the Capitol Report on NTD Television. I'm Steve Lance. Ohio's governor is calling on Congress to close a loophole in the law. He says the state was not told that hazardous materials were on the train that derailed. Now he wants to make sure something like that won't happen again. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine said the railroad company Norfolk Southern will stay at the crash site until everything is cleaned up. He also said the railroad is providing hotel accommodations for anyone who has concerns. Norfolk Southern, Southern is responsible for this problem. Uh, we fully expect them uh, to live up to what the CEO committed to me, and that is that they will pay for everything. Uh, if they don't, we run attorney general here and that will file a lawsuit. So, look, they're responsible for this. They did it. But there is one thing about the situation that DeWine does not agree with. Even though some rail cars did have hazardous material on board, uh, and while most of them did not, that's why it was not uh, categorized as a high hazardous material train. Uh, frankly, uh, if this is true, and I'm told it's true, uh, this is absurd. Uh, and we need to look at this, uh, and Congress needs to take a, take a look at how these things are handled. And the next day, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance said this on Fox Business. Governor DeWine is exactly right. This train was not labeled as high hazardous. We're looking into why that was. That's likely a screw up on the Department of Transportation side, and we're trying to investigate that as we speak. Uh, the second thing, the thing that we're most focused on right now, Maria, is the quality of the air and water, especially the water. Uh, we're encouraging everybody to get their ground wells tested. There are a lot of private wells in this area, and we want to make sure that the water is safe to drink. The federal government is assisting in the aftermath of the train derailment. The Environmental Protection Agency, the Transportation Department, and the National Transportation Safety Board are all involved. On Wednesday, DeWine said this on MSNBC about the help he's received so far. What I said to the president is if I need additional help, we'll tell you, but the people who have been in here from the federal government are doing a very good job. We reached out to the Department of Transportation for comment, but we didn't hear back before airtime. Jason Perry. NTD News. A new report sheds light on the looming national debt, which is on track to break a record in five years. Congress is grappling with how to raise the debt limit, and today Senate Leader Chuck Schumer bashed Republicans' proposed spending cuts. Here's NTD's Melina Wisecup with more. As Congress is pressed to reach a deal on raising the debt limit, House Republicans are pushing for spending cuts they say is meant to lower the deficit. The House Budget Committee recently proposed cutting from areas like uh, cutting recent investments in climate programs or slashing funding that was granted in the recently passed omnibus bill, such as the $3.6 million meant for creating a Michelle Obama trail in Georgia or the $1 million meant for creating a space for gender expansive people of color. Republicans say cuts like this are necessary to get the debt under control. But it sends a statement to the country and to the president that we're here to do business, that we're here to take back the uh, spending and make sure America lives like every family lives according to a budget. In this proposal, House Republicans also aim to save money in programs like SNAP, that is the food stamp program, by establishing income verification. The proposal also uh, suggests capping Obamacare subsidies. Democrats today are pushing back. Reducing affordable child care when we know it is critical. A 30 percent cut in everything affecting people from health care, education. This as President Biden is in Maryland today talking about his plan to reduce the deficit. Here's a look. On March the 9th, I'm going to lay down my entire budget. How much I want to spend, how much we're going to do, everything from taxes cut and raised. These comments come as the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget put out a report revealing that the level of debt is on track to break its record as, the, as a share of the economy in just five years, set to nearly double to around $46 trillion in a decade. I asked Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer what Democrats' solution is for this. Here's his response. Saying that if the current fiscal path stays the same over five, the next five years, will reach a record in national debt. What is your uh, proposal for solving that? Well, you've seen what we've done already. In the IRA, we actually cut the deficit by $300 um, billion. For every dollar we spent, we put a dollar into deficit reduction. 
Congress must act to raise the debt limit by this summer in order to avoid an unprecedented debt default, which would cause a ripple effect of economic challenges. Some senators are floating an idea to allow the president to have the sole authority to raise the debt limit on its own without first having to get approval from Congress. I asked Senator Schumer if he supports this, but he did not give an answer. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Melina Weiskup, NTD News. More revelations about the Chinese spy balloon and how the U.S. reacts to Beijing's latest threats of retaliation. And today's Iris Tao has more. The U.S. could have been tracking the Chinese spy balloon for longer than we thought. That's according to new reports by the Washington Post and CBS, which cited anonymous officials in saying that a U.S. military had been tracking the Chinese spy balloon for nearly a week before shooting it down, and was even watching as the balloon took off from China's south coast. The State Department, however, would not confirm that to me on Wednesday. Can you confirm reports that the U.S. had been tracking the Chinese spy balloon ever since it took off from the Chinese south coast? I, I'm not in a position to speak to that. That is a question for my colleagues at the, at the Pentagon, so I need to refer you. The Pentagon did not get back to us before airtime. Meanwhile, officials also told the Washington Post that the analysts are now looking into the possibility that China didn't intend to send its spy balloon all the way into the American heartland. The U.S. says that does not matter. The PRC violating our sovereignty, violating international law by sending a high altitude surveillance balloon deep into the heartland uh, of the United States. And senators who got briefed on China again on Wednesday said the same. Whether or not it uh, was purposeful or was deviated by wind patterns is something the Chinese are still responsible for. Once they send that balloon, even going over Guam, it's about sensitive information uh, of United States uh, defense capabilities. Meanwhile, Beijing is now threatening to retaliate after the U.S. shot down China's balloon and announced sanctions against Chinese aerospace companies. Beijing said Wednesday that it would take countermeasures against U.S. entities that, quote, undermine China's sovereignty. He asked the State Department for the U.S.'s response. Uh, the PRC's attempts to uh, accuse us uh, of doing the same. It is uh, just more misinformation, disinformation. Uh, it is just not true. This week, China accused the U.S. of flying spy balloons to China, a claim that the White House outright refutes. We are not flying surveillance balloons over China. Meanwhile, lawmakers are calling on President Biden to formally address the nation about the Chinese spy balloon and three other objects, all downed in just over a week. And the White House is now reportedly considering for Biden to give a speech on this topic this week. Reporting from the White House, Iris Tao, NTD News. The Department of Justice has decided not to charge Congressman Matt Gates after a years-long investigation. The investigation into the Republican from Florida started back in 2020. Gates was accused of violating federal law by paying for prostitution, including with women who were younger than 18 years old. He's repeatedly denied any wrongdoing in the DOJ, found no reason to charge him. Earlier this month, the House voted to pass a resolution that denounces socialism. All Republicans voted for the bill, as well as roughly half of the Democrats. And Congresswoman Maria Salazar was a sponsor of that resolution. NTD's Melina Wisecup spoke with her to learn more. Congresswoman Maria Salazar from Florida, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Okay, so I first want to talk about immigration. You obviously just had a bill passed on socialism. A lot of the reason why many people are coming to the United States is to flee socialism. Now we see Democrats trying to separate the issue of immigration from border security. What is your reaction to that? Well, socialism is the most important threat the most existential threat that this country faces at this hour. This has nothing to do with political parties. You could be a Democrat, a Republican, or an Independent and repudiate the horrors of socialism. And that was the nature of my bill, the horrors of socialism. So if you're a Democrat, I do not understand why 109 Democrats did not vote against uh, Stalin, Mao, Fidel Castro, Chavez. We know, we know what they have done to their people. So as a Cuban American from Little Havana, uh, daughter of political refugees, people that do know that regardless of what the theory says, the practice is miserable. That's why I am here in Congress, because those uh, constituents put me here, people that do know the horrors of socialism, and that's why I brought that bill to the floor. And it's inconceivable 
that more than 100 Democrats said no to the horse of socialism. And that is the problem in this country. And you know Biden's uh, immigration policy, he's expanded humanitarian parole for people coming from different countries to try to help them get out of those tough situations. visas for Cubans, Venezuelans, Nicaraguans, and Haitians. And that is great for those people, but that's just a band-aid. It's a band-aid for this very major wound that, it, that is bleeding, so which is immigration. Is it immigration reform is what we need. Immigration reform put an end to the border. No more fentanyl. No more child sex traffickers. No more disorder at the border. Seal it and then take care of the people who are here. So that's my bill. My bill is called the Dignity Act. It's not amnesty, it's dignity. Do you think the president plays a big role in sending a message of America's stance on socialism? Of course. In because it's not Biden him, it's not him, it's the people around him. The people around him are neo-Marxists, and that's a big problem. How, there are two examples that I can think of. Uh, the, the balloon, he gave the order to shoot it down on Wednesday, and it happened on Saturday. Since when? The commander-in-chief says, hey, do something on Wednesday, because I believe, and it's proven, the empirical evidence right there says it, that he may not be in charge. Because if he were to be in charge, then his orders are fulfilled the moment he says. And, and with, a, with this, a balloon that, that is spying on behalf of China. I don't have to explain to you what that is. Now the border, Venezuela. When he cut off oil from Russia, one of his national security advisors went to talk to Maduro in Venezuela. Maduro has destroyed, the Chavez revolution has destroyed Venezuela in 20 years. That's what we don't want to happen in this country. So once again, national security advisors, the bureaucrats, the, the officials that are around the President Biden, most of them have shown that they are socialist or that they like the socialist practices. Very anti-American. What do you think Biden should have done differently over the past two years then with regards to how the U.S. deals with China and other social uh, authoritarian well, regimes? Well, the former uh, GOP president, he established the rules of the game with China. He explained that China, you cannot continue stealing our intellectual property. You cannot do this balloon uh, game. You need to respect the rule of law. You cannot continue killing the Uyghurs. You know, you if you want to play ball and trade with the United States, then you have to behave accordingly. But that is not the message that this administration is sending to China or to the border. The border is in the hands of the executive. Immigration is in the hands of the White House. Look at what's happening. We cannot have any more kids dying of fentanyl, but Congress is sending the message to do something, Mr. President. And let me say something else. I represent the Hispanics, largest minority in the country, and I'm sending the message loud and clear that the Hispanics do not want an open border. We want order at the border and then take care of those who are here contributing with the economy and give them dignity, not amnesty or citizenship, which is different. Thank you, Congresswoman. All right. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.